Hey folks and welcome to Tully River Quail. It's uh, Friday night here and you know what that means. It means it's time to get stuff ready to ship for tomorrow. Um, at least have stuff ready to pick up for folks to pick up. So we have a couple chicks that are going to be picked up tomorrow. Just wanted to go over with you some packaging uh, that we use. Might be helpful in your business. I'm sure you probably know this stuff. If you don't, if you just have some extra quail and you're going to sell them or you're getting involved in a business. It's a great little tricks to uh, kind of get you going. Anyway, you can get these cardboard shippers for chicks. They're made for day old chicks. You can actually ship in these um, when it's warm enough. Okay, so one thing you have to consider is when you're shipping day old chicks that they need to stay at 95 degrees. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But this box can actually hold up to 20, 25 day old chicks. So that's pretty good. Now you can ship other chicks in there. The US Postal Service said something about they have to be over a certain weight to ship adults or they have to be under three days old. And you're supposed to list the hatching number on there, the hatching name, the date it was hatched, and your company name if you're going to ship live chicks but you can ship right in this box basically this just folds up goes into these little tabs right here and the box folds over you tape it and you put the labels on it and that's how it ships i get these from breezy farms b-r-e-e-s-e -E -E. uh, they're the only company that puts this insulated blanket instead of putting that uh straw material excelsior in there this is fine for dale chicks doesn't get them tangled up um, one of the things that i like to do is we use this stuff called grow gel it's a little white powder you spray some water into it like maybe a shot glass of water and scoop up a little quarter teaspoon and it makes a white water filled very nutritious very um, good to eat um, crumble liquid crumble kind of thing but usually what I'll do is I'll cut this little strip off and I'll hot glue either one or two with that grow gel in there and that gives them enough water and enough nutrition to last a couple days I guess you probably would put more in there if you were going to ship them for you know take ship them a couple days but I do this when I'm giving this for people that are take picking up chicks I use these boxes if they don't bring their own box all right, so one of the things that you can do when you're shipping live chicks is use something like this UniHeat. A lot of these companies that sell these cage or these shipping containers, they used to sell these. For some reason, they don't. But this UniHeat Jumbo Shipping Warmer, 72 plus hours at 95 degrees, can't ask for anything better than that. The best thing to do is either um, tape that down, put it in a corner, um, get it so it's not flopping around there for some reason something happens it can hurt a bird so use a hot glue gun and tape it on the four corners activate it stick it in put your birds in and you're good to go sometimes what i do if they're just instead of wasting one of these i will use some hot water in a plastic bottle like this and then i will put it in my incubator so it's the proper temperature and when the customer comes, I'll have this in a little doggy, green doggy bag that I tie at the end just in case it leaks. And I use some of this packing material. Let me just show you. Some ribbon like that or this green stuff. Um, just use a little sling of that and I staple it to the side wall. So this sits in there in this little plastic bag. And I don't fill it all the way. I make it so there's a flat crush spot and I don't leave any air holes in there. So this kind of just stays flush because it's squished a little bit and I use like this material like I said just to make a little loop down and around it and then I staple it right here and that keeps that in there all right so that's the heat that's the water that's the feed these are basically just empty cat food containers but this is what I wanted to really show you I have a customer that's coming over to pick up 16 uh, adult birds and well they're five week old but anyway so i made this out of a air filter box air filters are very flimsy so they need a pretty strong box to support them so this box is actually pretty good i took a one inch drill put some holes in it um, a lot of plastic transport kits you see will have slices which i could have done with a 
little angle grinder instead of these holes but I don't think they're gonna stick their head out through there and then I made a top so you can put birds in get birds out one-handed almost operation but, well I guess I need to glue it <laughs> good thing I did this um, anyway so that's the trick for that and then I have this one wired and screwed together so it's kind of wired but the same kind of thing but I left the flap in this so I have two access holes a side one and a top one just basically like a professional cage but made out of cardboard and I guess what I could have done I thought at one point was to take this salmon tray maybe cut it and then put two pieces of corrugated plastic on either side and I can make like an accordion type door it would give them a little bit of view but one of the things you're thinking about when they're shipping is to not let them see too much you don't want them to know they're traveling also the other thing is you want to limit this to about six or seven inches in height because you don't want them popping up and jumping so now this guy only has an hour and a half to travel but that's going to get him home and something that's pretty much disposable and uh i think he's going to be pretty happy as long as i can get my little twisty thing fixed on there better by 10 o'clock tomorrow um let me show you another thing here what we do it's always nice when you're doing business to you know be professional you want to make sure that the folks you're working with are happy you don't want them you know and if you can supersede their expectations if you're in business to help other folks get into quail it goes a long way to show courtesy answer the phone but having a nice receipt and let me just show you this is a receipt that we make i mean we use nice paper printed on that kind of represents our tully river theme i have a little silver sticker on there um, put our accreditations down here at pennsylvania quail cooperative and then I have my number and invoice and name, and I list all the things that they buy. So, and a little thank you at the bottom. So, also see that it's personally signed. So that's kind of nice. Um, you know, that, put something like that inside your hatching egg foamy box that goes in the If It Clicks It Ships box. Or, you know, hand that to them when they're walking out with after giving you some of their hard-earned money so anyway that's all i got to say about this i guess that's a lot but hopefully this will get his 16 birds home nice safe and he's going to pick up some feed he's getting a, a bucket and a bag over there and he also is getting these uh cereal box diy sandbox liners make these little scratch resistant liners that you put inside of a cereal box if you cut a hole with a little half inch perimeter around the top you can slide this in and they won't scratch through it so you can actually make a sandbox out of a cereal box put these in and you can reuse that cereal box a week or two and then when that cereal box gets beat up you just take this out clean it and put it back in and now you have another sandbox so it's a way to have nice it's a good size family size cereal box so you can get about six birds in there if they're standard birds sometimes our jumbos have to take turns three at a time because they're big <laughs> all right folks stay free tolly river quail over and out